Friday night. Another Friday night. No, that's not it. It's a Saturday night. Where's he going? Where's that guy going? Down in the hall. Friday night. Time to do some work on the truck again. What do we have here tonight? We had... Uh, he's not too talkative. He brought some peanut brittle, which is my favorite. I love peanut brittle. We got this other stuff here. It's Friday night. Don't forget. Work week is done. Um, there's that carburetor you saw. What else? We had uh, had some pizza tonight. That was our big dinner. Had the Benevuto pizza. It was good. Still some left if you want to come by. Whoever you might be, come on by. Probably be moldy by then. So what are we going to do? Oh, he yanked out of the truck. Uh, anyway, so what we're going to do is do some wiring today. So we're going to rewire the commutator, clean up that commutator. Um, you got the four wires there. You got some wires, I believe two wires here from the headlights because you got high beam, low beam. And we'll end up having a wire from the generator, which goes, uh, well, you can follow it. It goes da -da 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 all the way along here and over to here. And... Um, so we'll figure that out. We got a schematic, and if we don't have a schematic, we'll write it down and take some pictures so we'll remember these things. He's still not talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, get some stuff off here. Oh, so what Dad's going to do is he's not just going to carry those nuts around all night. He's going to paint the uh, at least half, three quarters, two thirds of this, or, or six. Uh, or four sixths, I'm not sure. Two thirds or four sixths, three eighths or six sixteenths of this firewall up to here and uh, paint that in some flat black. Tidy that up. So that's that's his job. My job, this stuff over here. He didn't want that job, so I guess I got the job. <laughs> Pardon. Dad, drop. <laughs> Dad dropped his nuts. Enough. Took him 74 years. Yeah. Herman's here. <clears throat> you know Herman from such movies as Friday Night Quad Night. Uh huh. Murder in the <laughs> Murder in the Murder Tenth in the Degree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got um, got the wires taken off here. We got the grounds <laughs> for the coil commutator. We got the spark plug wires off. We got the headlight wires. We know which ones those are. And we got our commutator numbered one through four. Luckily, there was no five or six, otherwise, it would have been a big job. Oh, and we got uh, that's just pointing to the, uh, the generator. We got that one off there, too. So that's going uh, somewhere, too. So we got to figure out where that is over here. Trace that over and change that out. We're just getting recaps tonight, folks. Just over there? Yeah. You're just getting recaps, folks. You're not getting the in-depth, uh, uh, very impressive information that you're used to every week. So, Friday nights are more of a get-together and uh, do some work and screw some stuff up. What'd you say it was? <laughs> sure the who done it? <laughs> the who done it? All right, we got them all taken apart here. Here's the commutator from it. I don't know. It's, I think it's an original one. It says Ford on it. I'm guessing it's original. Also have one of these guys here, the uh, new day timer. But I think we'll just clean this guy up. Nothing wrong with this one. Good spare. This one's clean too. Bit of damage right up there though. Oh no, hard to see what's going on there. Otherwise, clean. No wear there. In those pads. Those contact. <coughs> those contact positions. Anyway. The New Day one is black, blue, green, red. This one's got nothing on it, so I just numbered them up <clears throat> for the to uh, to be the um, position from one to the number one post on the firewall, etc., up to four. So anyway, we'll clean this up, rewire, and get that going, and see if we can get go Dad going on some cleaning over there. <laughs>
brushes allow you to take your time. Yeah, Dad's getting the firewall all done up. Looks really good. He's going to take that paint and dump it right down that right hole down back there. there. <laughs> right down here. Yeah. The commutator is all color coded. We didn't go with the uh, vintage harness, but we went with the color coding. So, so we're half okay. If I leave this camera on long enough, that paint's going to hit the floor. <laughs> all right. So what we found was. This is actually very simple. And uh, that is, so you have the socket for your bulb and your connector on the back. And the connector on the back is also really simple and there's no soldering to do. It just has a couple clamp downs on it, one on that side, one on that side. So you have to strip back the wire, the new wire. Goes into the socket, snugs down, and that's the end of it. Really simple. All right, we got our loom. We'll come back later. Put my uh, heat shrinks on. Got them in the loom. Coming through, everything's color coded. Color coded wires. Yellow for the uh, generator. These two guys are for the lights. And that's it. Finish up our connections on this end. And that's that side of the truck done. Probably the hardest side of the truck, maybe. Uh, Let's see, count that, which has to go into the switch. <laughs> which isn't... Like the switch might be the close stuff. Yeah, a little closer stuff, but we'll, we'll start at the switch and then run through the hole and then make our terminations on the block. But yeah, coming right along. Nice and tidy, new wire, nothing frayed. Well, Dad is merrily scraping away over there, getting ready to do some painting on that firewall. And I have this nice bunch of <laughs> work to deal with. I think we can reuse this. We'll keep this for a spare. <laughs> Can't go back now, can we? Everything is pretty clear. When you look at the schematic that's available online, it's exactly as these switches are. So I'm not seeing any big difficulty here. Get that done. Put it back in the truck. Hopefully we're good. Christmas? Merry Christmas to two. Two? Two fill in the blanks? <laughs> <laughs> fill in your own name. <laughs> Whoa, it's kind of chilly out here. Damn. Here goes Grave Digger. <laughs> Ice is about, oh, at least six inches. Check it with me little hatchet chopped a hole couldn't even get down to the water so it's at least six inches thick ice which is really weird wouldn't have thought it'd be that thick for now get her get her <laughs> goggles of paisano it's okay as an addition to the rest of the video going on so a friend of mine steven from over at the fliver channel um, recently became a friend of mine. I subscribed to his channel. I suggest you do the same if you uh, are interested in Model T's and some really good tech resource. Go on over to his channel called the Fliver Channel. I'll stick a link down in the uh, down the um, description down there, and uh, head on over and visit him. Got a lot of great stuff over there. Super nice guy. However, he did shame me into. Uh, <laughs> into finishing up this carburetor. He said, oh, yeah, not going to change that spring out on there, that return spring. Well, you know, I hadn't even really noticed it, and I, I should have taken a closer look. On this uh, Holly NH carburetor, there is a spring. There's the end of it. Uh, where is it over here? I don't have my really good glasses on, but it's over here. And it returns the butterfly, choke butterfly, back to the open position. It's supposed to hold it open and when you pull the lever it uh you know you choke it just like a choke you know so anyway the uh, task at hand is to remove that butterfly and put a new spring on get one from snyder's i've been getting a lot of parts from snyder's lately i think they're getting to know me by a first name basis when i cross over the border and pick them up at the 
parcel pickup. Anyway, there it is right there. There is a spring. So it's got to go on here, kind of inboard, and then hook around here. And like I say, it's just going to return that back. Right now what I have is a spring kind of just mounted in the truck. And it yanks that, sorry, the other way, yanks it back open. Um, the right way to do it is to just replace this spring. So first and foremost, we need to, inside this carburetor, inside the inlet, there's a staple right there. Can you see that? There you go, you can see that. There's a staple right there. It's a pin staple, they call it. And it is holding this butterfly, this little flapper here, <clears throat> in there, in the slot. So in this rod that goes across, or the shaft, this choke shaft, there is a slot. And this little disc slides into that slot. It's got two holes, one on each side. The staple goes in. So you can see that a little better. Staple goes in and then bends around the backside and you're not gonna be able to see that. But believe me, there is, it's bent over on the backside there. And that captures that and holds the butterfly and holds it all as one. And with that butterfly there, the, this shaft also cannot move out. So um, I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna take that staple out of there. And you guys can watch and I might edit a little bit here as I, if I have to fuss around with it too, too much and uh, turn you back off, turn you back on, and let's see how we get on with this. And this will pop out of here. Back and forth a little bit. Pull that out. Oh, there they are. there's the ends right there. I actually fell out already. Probably pull that bowl off just to make sure I didn't get a chunk in there, because I wouldn't want to have a chunk down there in the bowl and get sucked up into a jet, and then from the jet, Get sucked on through from here, runs into the intake valve. Really don't want that kind of stuff banging around in the inside of the engine, do I? Anyway, so there's your disc. Uh, we should be able to work that back and forth. There's a little, two little holes I was telling you about. See that? Two little holes. So let's see if we can work that disc out of there without bending it. Don't want to bend it. Ugh. tight as you can see once it's out you can't really close it any longer I'm gonna fight with it a bit it's probably extra dirty there it is we'll clean that back up before we pull that out so right, before we put it back in we'll clean it all up it's a little brass disc over on Steven's channel Fliver channel he actually makes some of these also very interesting. So anyway, there we go. That's that out. With that out, this choke shaft should then slide out, which it does. It's nice and snug in that bore, which is good news. So I won't have to shim anything. I won't have to make any new bushings. There we go. That's out. You see, nothing in there now. We'll clean this up with a wire brush. Sorry if you guys can't hear me very well today, but um, my mic is not charged up. So we're just going off the mic on the phone. Let's check this. He told me it was 0 .040, which is 40 thou. So let's get a caliper on there. So we got it is a little it is a little bit bigger than that it's about 40 i would say that'd be closer to 045 but you know what i think probably we're gonna see if 040 is gonna work yeah it might be close to 050 hmm. might be just real dirty too if we use some 040 wire let's see what we get here yeah, you know what? 040 wire goes in there just fine. You don't have to be too fussed about it. It's just pinning that in there anyway. So what's the length we need? Well, we got to go through. So we're going to be the distance between those two holes. And you know, what we'll probably do is we'll just get it through here, get it through one side, kind of eyeball it go halfway because this has to fold over. 
and that bends over. Yeah. No big deal. We'll clean that up too. So, this is just some welding wire. Just some solid welding wire. 040 from my welder. Actually, sorry, from my buddy Darren's welder. Got the loop of it from his place. I only got 0.035 and 0.030 and 0.025, and he has some larger stuff because he does some larger welding. Anyway, anyway, you know what we could do is we could use this little one here as a template to make our new one for the distances. Not a difficult thing. Anyway, this is, uh, what have we got? So we gotta get the other the little remnants out of the spring. There it is. There's the rest of the spring in there. Can you see it in there? Right there, there's the rest of it. So we're gonna bend this over. Matter of fact, we don't need to bend over, we just clip it. We're not gonna use it again. Clip that, and that spring will fall out. That's it, there's the old spring. A hundred year old spring, ta-da. So, I'm gonna just shut you guys off for a second so I don't uh, blast your ears. And I'm gonna get this on the uh, on the wire wheel, clean this up, tidy this up, and we'll get back to reassembly. All right, so let's do it. We gotta clean, clean these up, clean up the butterfly, clean up the shaft, clean it all up. So it should go in there easily. The spring can really only go one way, uh, which is this way, goes on, goes through the hole. This sticks out a lot more than I think it should, and we're gonna see if that's gonna give us trouble. So if it gives us trouble, we're gonna have to adjust it a little bit. Goes in there. And that is going to go like this. If you can see it, sorry. Like so. Yeah, you know what? That it's not seated in there far enough. Can you see that spring is sticking out way too far? That should be in tight, which is because that spring is not, is bent outwards on an angle and it should not be. So, um, it's really, you know, it should be about flush come up here. And it's not, and it's not binding, but it's not, I don't know. We'll see. I think we're gonna have to bend it and adjust it a bit. It should be closer in, in there. I'm gonna pop that out, adjust that spring. But anyway, that is a um, substantially more spring force, huh? Look at that. Pop that out, I'm gonna adjust that spring. All right, a little persuasion. Kinda of took care of that, so there we go. Still not quite, per I feel like maybe they've got one extra turn on the spring loops that they don't need. It, it actually might be a little more, a little more stiff than it needs to be. But um, once that butterfly gets in there, that's probably gonna be okay. So anyway, just to show you what that looks like now, I had to stick that in the vise and kind of over bend it past the other way just to get it to line back up again so there you go it's a lot closer now it was sticking out that way before as you remember from uh, such episodes as vince bends the spring from three seconds ago <laughs> anyway i think that'll be fine everything this is straight it should really be just flush with and then straight out at a 90 and uh and that's it we'll probably probably bend this one in a bit too so anyway we'll get that Put back on so let's make a staple let's make a staple <clears throat> actually I'll tell you what let's get this in here first that's gonna go like so into that hole it's a little bit fussy huh goes in there it's then going to go here, and it's going to go underneath. Do you see how that goes? Well, this hooks over, 
this guy goes under. If I can get that in the hole. <laughs> Oh yeah, fight me. Fight me, why don't you? Here we go. Goes underneath there. That's actually a really good fit now. Pretty happy with that. It's right where it needs to be. Alright, so our little guy here needs to That is going to be fun getting that lined up, isn't it? Goes inside here. What we're going to do? We're going to make our clip first. Let's just. Um, you want to watch me making this, copying this little staple? No, you don't. We shut you off for a sec. We make this staple, and we'll get back in it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, I shouldn't have jumped ahead. I did. If you want to see a fellow wrestle with one, with getting it in that slot and getting those little holes lined up, then definitely head over to Steven's uh, Fliver channel and you can watch him kind of wrestle with that. So it's kind of a matter of getting that shaft lined up just right, the holes lined up, and then of course that butterfly has to be perfectly centered in that bore and the holes have to be lined up. So. Uh, this one is, and I just use a couple of my, just open that up, just use a torch tip cleaner just to make sure. I use these torch tip cleaners for all sorts of things, cleaning out carb passages, jets, just that, make sure it goes right through, and it does. So all we gotta do is get my little pre-made staple. Did I tell you I made that staple also? Off camera, I did. Sorry, apologize. You guys don't want to watch that kind of stuff. Person making staples. Oops, sorry, I bumped you. Get that in that hole. Come on, you can get in there. See, more fussy stuff. It's all fussy work, right? Just a bit of fussy work. There we go. Tap it in. There we go. See on the back side? So all that's left, really. Snug that up nice. Carefully, do not bend that shaft. Don't pry on it. And bend that. Bend your staples over. Get my hands right in your way, huh? Sorry. But it is kind of fussy stuff. Bend that over. That's one. Say don't bend that shaft. Don't be prying on it. It is not easy to get in there. Maybe I could get a bigger set of pliers. <laughs> you know, it's kind of akin to uh, every once in a while you get these split pins and you just can't get them snug down or you can't get them opened up. There we go. Look good, what do you guys think? Yep, looks to be. Seems to be a good fit. All right, guys, that's how you get it done. There's no, there's no way to get it done without just doing it. Just put one foot in front of the other one and just get it done. All right, well, that is the extent of it. There's a few more chunks of wire kicking around, but um, that's all the garbage we took out of this thing. I'm kind of surprised, really, <laughs> that, uh, you know, after doing that cold startup, that it actually ran, because you look at this wire, and uh, you think, wow, how, how did that even happen? So, um, some pretty nasty stuff. So there we go. Wiring is all done. Uh, new lights, new bulbs, new wires, everything cleaned up made uh, about as close to new as I think it's going to get. Went with color-coded, the commutator, etc. Everything else is color-coded according to the, um, the wiring schematic available online. So we're kind of uh, coming to a close in this area. Um, oh, you know what? Let me just shout out uh, one guy who was a big help to me. 
was uh, Steve, I'm going to say his last name is Blancard, Blanchard, Blancard, I'm going to go with. He um, provided me a uh, cutout. Uh, mine had gone bad and was grounding uh, straight to the chassis. And so much so that uh, the last time I put power to the um, battery, I got a nice puff of smoke coming out of the wires. So I thought, well, well um, something's going on there. Ended up being the cutout, tested it, and uh, he shipped that out to me real quick, real, real fast. So um, shout out to him. Thanks for being so helpful and um, so accommodating. So <clears throat> I have the old cutout on the, on the bench there. Um, don't know what I'll do with it. Maybe put one of those, um, electronic devices inside and maybe keep it as a spare. I'm not really too sure. Anyway, as you can see, we are, um, done a, quite a few little things here. Um, the thing, uh, what do we have left to do? Nothing really as far as wiring. Wiring is all complete. Um, I do, I did leave myself a good length of wire because I have to run a piece of wire to my tail light and I'm not going to get to that because that's way back there in the dark in the cold it's minus 35 here today yeah I said it it's minus 35 can you believe it I should be out blowing snow because uh, we also got a storm a couple, <laughs> a couple days ago um, but um, I've been avoiding you know being hanging around Kim uh, the whole week because she's got a cold and I didn't want to get a cold well guess what yeah, that's me sniffing. I got a cold. <laughs> that figures, right? Yeah, whatever. What are you going to do? So, um, if it warms up a bit tomorrow, like by a bit, I mean if it gets to, warms up to like minus 20, I'll, uh, we'll see how I feel and I'll maybe go out and blow that snow. Anyway, um, what I also did was, uh, when I was doing the wearing is if you look, uh, you guys can't see, I got not much light on the subject here, but um, that's how I'll take care. Picked up another, a new Magneto um, contact. Uh, mine had just crumbled away into bits when I went to change the wire. So that's been changed out. Uh, that was a fairly inexpensive purchase actually from Snyder's. Uh, bang, bang, bang. Also have to source out some guides for those windows so they don't bang around so much. If anyone has uh, some thoughts on what might be available to work in those slots, other than some, maybe some U-channel that I could maybe uh, PL into there, um, let me know. Let me know what you think will fit. And I'll, uh, and I'll get that too and get that glass quietened down. Anyway, that is it for this video. Um, it's, it's been an accumulation of about four different nights. And then, you know, we also had Christmas got in there. Uh, and uh, we went to a wedding out in Regina, Saskatoon. And um, so originally this wiring job started December 1st, I think it was. And here we almost uh, mid January now, I guess, right? So that's been like a month and a half. It shouldn't have taken that long, but, um, you know, it is what it is. Time just moves on by. Next thing we're going to do is get in and, uh, tie rods. Look at that nice bend. See those bends there? Yeah. You know, those bends don't belong there. So we're going to take those out, take those, uh, the tie rod and the, uh, I guess one's a drag link, one's a tie rod, take those apart, take them out, straighten them, put them back together because as it is, I have a boat, um, <laughs> if I kind of get the wheels somewhat centered, I end up with a boat, um, let's get my pajamas on still. <laughs> yeah, I'm lazy today. Um, I end up with about two inches of tow out. And as far as I know, we're probably supposed to have like, I don't know, maybe an eighth, quarter inch tow in. Um, you keep in mind, you know, whatever, it's a tea truck. We're not setting any breakneck speeds and uh, wobbling out of control here. I think we're going to get uh, 10 or 12 mile an hour out of it. So, um, but I'd like to get that straightened up and um, finish that up. Then what? Then I guess we're going to move on to the inside of the truck and uh, get moving on some upholstery. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to remake the floorboards this winter. I might do that during the summer. 
when I can kind of put the saw outside and let the sawdust fly out there instead of in the shop. But um, yeah, that'll be next is those, um, those steering components. And then, um, you know, once we get through all that kind of stuff, who knows, it might be April by then and uh, we'll start changing some tires. Um, also, we do need to get a rad put in here. So I need to seal up a couple little areas on that rad because they leaked a little bit. It didn't pour, but just kind of seeped a bit. So we got to tidy that up. Got some new mounting hardware. It's not in here right now. That's, that's the old stuff. Got some new mounting hardware for the rad. Gonna get that in there. Need to make a belt and um, get that in there because uh, nobody seemed to have a belt available, but um, whatever, that's okay. We'll make one, it's no big thing. Anyway, guys, um, hope you're having a good weekend. What are we, Saturday today? Yeah, Saturday. Tomorrow's Sunday. M work on Monday. If you're lucky, you're retired. If you're not lucky, you're going back to work Monday. Anyway, guys, have a great night, and uh, thanks for hanging out, and uh, thanks for the folks that helped me out. Oh, and, and you know, another big thank you is to a friend of mine, uh, Stephen, uh, over, down at the, over at the Fliver Channel. Super nice guy. Sent me um, sent me a great little gift over Christmas, as I know he probably sent uh, some of you some gifts. And uh, super nice guy, super helpful, and uh, he's become a, a really a good friend and, uh, you know, a companion in arms, I guess, I suppose, working on these Model Ts. Take it easy, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.